What happens when you bring two of the world's best collectors together and challenge them to go head to head in a 10 round auction battle? Welcome to Clash of the Collectibles. Two experts compete on a road trip treasure hunt. Carry on whinging. <laughs> Our combatants, Great Britain's international antique star, Eric Knowles. I'm butting for Britain. He's travelled to Australia to take on top dealer, author and retro lover, Alan Carter. So it is a genuinely difficult competition. I want to beat him and he wants to beat You're me. You're looking at me. You're looking at me. It's all about outwitting. Oh, 50 dollars. Give I'll give you 60. Outdealing. <laughs> Better watch this one. <laughs> Over $200, Alan. Do you, are you serious? And outselling in a massive auction showdown. First, second, third and final I'll sell. Whoever wins the most rounds after 10 auctions will win the competition. Both our experts can buy anything they want, and we mean anything. It's so you. Because yesterday's perfect purchase could turn out to be auction day's big dud. Paid 100 for those. Ouch. So fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. I want to kick you. What a bad loser. Round two, and Eric Knowles needs a win. You can hold your head up high in Sydney, Alan. <laughs> Last time he lost by just $240 when his ancient crystals failed to overtake Alan's fancy French furniture. So this is not the dream star, I can tell you. We've got one final stop in Sydney before heading bush to Australia's stunning southern highlands. Uh, and Eric and Alan are finding out how much money they've got to spend. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty Australian dollars. So, where are we off to now, Alan? Well, we're off to a shop called Ozteeks. So tell me about the owners. Uh, Ron and Julie, they're Londoners, um, lifelong dealers, incredibly knowledgeable. You will never catch them out. No? I've known them since they came into Australia. Oz Teaks is a treasure trove of glitzy European antiques. Talk about glitterati. The chandeliers in here are amazing. You know, if you ever decided to buy a really big property, I mean, Versailles, for example, I mean, this is the place you'd come to get it kitted out. <laughs> I ran in quite quickly because you've got to be ahead of Eric. Uh, Eric moves quite slowly through the shop, but his eyes are everywhere. Well, let's have a see. We shall see what we shall see. So I don't know. That's nice. I like that. But no, no, too big. And you'd want a pair, wouldn't you? You know, I'm not one to winch, uh, but I think it's fair to say that Alan steamed in there and made rapid purchases. Whether or not he was born with antique radar, I don't know. But he homes in pretty quick. Oh, you will probably notice that I don't really use it. Across the <laughs> <laughs> there. Oh, you pick out the bargains, and I bet you want an even better price. Well, I probably would. <laughs> Our charming dealer is Julie Mardell, but don't be fooled; oh, really? she is I a know, tough I'm nut. Hungry. Yeah, but I've got to make a profit somewhere. Well, it's not twenty-five like... dollars off, is it? Tell me what you'd like to pay. One hundred and ten. <gasps> no, I can't do it for that. Alan's first buy is an exquisite jewellery box from the 1850s. Look, 150 that's $100 off. That sounds sensible. See, it's a lot better than 25 bucks. Oh, God, I've got to start somewhere, too. Yeah, all right. There's no love loss in the antique business with your friends. They will not give you any extra discount than they would any other dealer, just because you have to be mates. They've got to make a, a profit on whatever they're doing. And it's got a stain down, down there. Next, he buys a Chinese plate dating from 1750. It's been recovered from a shipwreck. It's still got the barnacles. Yes. And a willow patterned English pie dish that's 150 years old. $100. I'm not going to argue about that. You sure? Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it came to the negotiations, charm personified, not me, uh, but Julie. Yeah, could I have a look at those uh, two? No rush, Eric. Carefully inspects a pair of French perfume bottles. That's, what, that's the mark you're looking for, isn't it? Yes, because... JP. 
those are the initials for a very uh, famous French porcelain maker called Jacob Petit. And that makes all the difference to collectors. This girl's lost her head at some stage, hasn't she? She's had a bit of cosmetic surgery. It's very well done. She lost it to that handsome man behind. <laughs> beside her. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to offend you, but I honestly think that my top, top, top buying price would be a hundred. You've been such a gentleman. You can have them for that price. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're such a charmer. You're Thank very, you. very welcome. A beautiful Art Deco French lamp catches Alan's eye. This is a Schneider. Charles Schneider. But it's missing a very important piece, the glass shade. And the difference in price is enormous. If it had the shade, you'd probably be looking at three to four thousand dollars. And Julie's got that mark, three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Alan gets it for two hundred and fifty dollars. So you knew what this was, most people don't. That's a woolly. Yeah. My favourite item is a woolly, beautiful little woolen picture that was made by sailors. Um, when they were at sea and they'd come home with their frame, there's a very pretty little picture. Woolies are actually difficult to find. You might find, um, well, I shouldn't say this in front of Julie, but you might find one woolly in three or four years. This is a small one, it's a little bit manky. Shall I tell you what's wrong with it, Jules? A little bit of my father there. <laughs> she doesn't know. But it's in the original frame, it's never been touched, never been cleaned. I like it because it's original, but I don't like it because it's $325. My stock is not manky, it's original. <laughs> original. In original condition. condition. <laughs> Alan's ship comes in for $225. If you're fighting Eric, you have to keep your mind exactly on what you're doing. You can't take your mind away from the fact that Eric's in the same building, he's going to see what you want, and you've got to get it before he turns up. <laughs> he's right on it. He's right where I want to be, where I don't want him to be. It's, it's elaborate, isn't it? I think it's very pretty. It's most yeah. attractive. Oh, well, I'll go with that. Eric's go got his that. eye on a Belgian-made chess table dating back to the early 1900s. To be frank, I'd be looking to pay, I don't know, 250 or something like that. I think that might be just a bit too low. OK, can we, can we get close? $300? Yeah, OK, 300 okay. I would have bought that for $300. But you know what? At the side of it, there was a set of library steps. They made it look like antique, got leather inserts, you know. And I actually want to buy this. Oh, dear. I want to buy that. And I'm hoping that you didn't see that. And if you did see that, you wouldn't reckon it. And once you put your finger on something, in theory, that's yours, and there's no, no one's supposed to argue with you about that. $50. <laughs> I'll give, you, I'll give you 60. Oh, no. What? And Eric jumped in and, I, and tried to outbid me on them. It's 70. not, I tell you what. Listen, I have 70 you, in this corner. <laughs> you didn't even see it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm bowing out gracefully. Looking seven, great. Right? Oh, well, I've no. never seen such a thing in the antique industry before. Not much. But you don't do that sort of thing, you know. Come on, go 80. No, and that's you can it. Take it home. Go that's on. it. No, Alan. But Alan. it cost me 20 extra dollars. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I told him off, he didn't care. If we were in England, you did that to an English dealer in England, yeah. what would happen to you? Well, I'd be horizontal you by would now. You'd be horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be <absolutely>. you know. <laughs> Alan's already spent a massive $900 in the first shop, leaving himself $350 for the rest of the tour. Conservative Eric has two items for $400. It's a 90-minute drive from Sydney to the Southern Highlands. This whole area is famous for its stunning natural wonders and beautiful gardens. In fact, locals started planting deciduous trees here 150 years ago to give the region a distinctly European look. It's a brand new day and a brand new opportunity for Eric to square the series. Oh, the sun is shining on the righteous. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm somewhat behind in the spending stakes at the moment, but I, I can't make up my mind whether it's because you've been lucky or I'm just too choosy. I think it'll be the choosy bit. You think so? I think probably the choosy bit. Probably. So, Alan 
was in the driving seat, which meant for me it was a pleasure to look out and to see the countryside and to look and look and look. And do you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for a kangaroo. I can tell you now, this is my fifth trip to Australia and I've yet to see a kangaroo. We've just arrived in the lovely Southern Highlands town of Mittagong. Eric has $850 left to spend, Alan just $350. Mittagong Antique Centre was a joy. And in fact, it's not like any other antique centre I've been in, certainly in the UK, um, because it smelled divine when I went in there. Didn't smell musty, um, and it was quite inviting. Well, Eric, may the best man win. OK, Alan. Win. Without saying yeah, we... me. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Go on, dream on, Alan. <laughs> dream on, lad. Eric is still feeling his way. His lack of local knowledge cost him round one. Hopefully, it won't cost him round two. I'd rather wish that I'd been here for three or four weeks before actually getting involved with this, uh, this competition, because I spent a lot of time going to auctions, just seeing what the market is looking for and buying accordingly. So without that hindsight, I've just got to go with gut reaction. There's no other word for it, gut reaction. Do I like that? Would other people like that? And would they prepare to pay that sort of money for it? As Eric struggles to find something to buy, Alan is spending his remaining cash on cheap and cheerful goodies. I like this. This is a little figure, look. It's not a lot of money. I'm going to have a go at that one. I like that. Well, I realised that Alan might have been under a certain amount of pressure because he had limited funds to spend today, uh, but that didn't seem to bother him. I just like these because they're silly. They're just funny little coasters. They've got no age to them, but they're not a lot of money either, and I just think they're fun. I, I like that one. This is my favourite one. <laughs> just silly stuff, isn't it? You know, so <laughs> I'm going to buy those. I'm going to buy those. Eric is looking at lots of things, but committing to none. Everything's beautifully displayed. Everything is beautifully labelled. The only problem really was there were fabulous things in there, and they were simply beyond my budget. Well, spare a thought for, uh, for this person, because they're not looking the best. Uh, having said that, they're almost 100 years old. And, and if I dare um, tell you that this person has got a split personality, um, I'm being quite literal, because um, it is um, one of those models that would be used um, in a medical school. Um, they are in demand. I'll tell you they're in demand, because this one is priced at $950. As Eric wanders, Alan is quick to spot a potential auction winner, Art Deco with a twist. I haven't seen that glaze before, and they've sort of done a bronze glaze, and I think it probably hasn't worked properly, because I don't think it should have these purple stripes running off of it. You see where it's all run down? So this is probably a mistake. And I like a good-looking mistake, though. It is a good-looking mistake, mm. and I like it because of that. I did have a fight with uh, Laurie, who owns the antique centre, trying to get a deal. She said 140, I'm looking for 125. 140. But I lost. What about 140? 140 is good to know. I thought it might be. <laughs> I was going to go, <laughs> not going to win every one, I can tell you. <laughs> it's been two hours, and Eric is still looking for his first buy. As Eric continues the search, Alan catches some fresh air and finds a retro collectible in the car park. Excuse me, excuse me, mate. Yes, sir. Uh, my name's Alan Carter. Oh, nice to meet you. Rude. Richard. Can you tell? I've never seen a real DeLorean before. OK. Can you tell me that? I mean, I, mean, I just noticed as you pulled up, you got the real number plate, MPH88. That's right. <laughs> Reference to the film, <laughs> Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Wow. Oh, dear me, what a car. How many would there be in Australia, then? There's varying numbers from about 60 to 100. With uh, no, Laurie, who amazing, owns the antique centre, trying really to get a deal. What, what would it be worth? You're looking at uh, well, lost. about 40 to 45,000 for one in this condition. I would have thought it would be in 100 grand bar. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I've had a good learning experience. Thank you. Thanks My for showing pleasure. me. That's all right. Brilliant. 
This is an um, interesting object insofar as it's not of any great age. Referred to as a factice. In other words, this is um, a display item that would go into a perfume shop. And in this case, it's to promote an essence called Escape by Calvin Klein. Finally, it looks like Eric might pull out his wallet. So what would be the best on that one? Oh, Eric, I think we could do that for you for 115. 115. Mm. Every penny counts. Every penny counts, doesn't, doesn't it? it? OK. I'm going to buy that. OK, fantastic. Okay. It was a nice object, and I thought I bought it at about the right price. Alan now has just $115 left to spend. By comparison, Eric's rich. He's got $7.35. Eric and Alan are exploring Mittagong in Australia's southern highlands. They're about to walk into something incredible. Here you go, Eric. And welcome to what I believe is probably the best antique shop in Australia. I don't get here often enough, but when I get here, I love it. Yeah, I can understand. Look at it. Just look, look at it. it. Look at it. You go that way. Yeah. Right? I'll go that way. Right. And I'll meet you at the end. OK. And I'll wipe your tears away from all the things that you want and you can't buy. Oh, Alan, you're so yeah. considerate. See, yeah, as we're... That's if the... I can see through mine. <laughs> Hunters and Collectors is truly one of a kind. Curated with love by owners Rod and Kathy Couchy. This couple covered the weird, the one-off and the, well, how would you describe it? Hunters and collectors. Wow. Wow and wow in that order. I mean, what an amazing, amazing... Do you call it a shop? It's almost like, you know, a sort of a museum where you can buy things. And you can see... This is going to sound like a bit nonsense, but you can see it's actually done with love. They love that shop and they take care of that shop like you can't believe. It's beautiful. If money's no object, why not splurge on some very cute little stuffed taxidermy birds? Wow. Unbelievable. By Fournier, the, the rarest. There's a paper yeah. label underneath. What have you got on that? Eight and a half thousand. How about a prop from the original Broadway production of the Beatles classic Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? This is Maxwell Silverhammer. And they had some leather bits that would tie on around their waist and you'd get on stage and actually sing with this. <laughs> Rod, it's so you. You think you look fed up. You ought to spend three weeks on the road with Eric Knowles, mate. Then you'll know what fed up really means. So, Eric, just in here, um, yeah. I want to show you a piece of Australian contemporary folk art. OK. It's over this way. Right. Have a look. What, at the truck? Yeah. That's Australian contemporary folk art? It sure is. Really? The chap who built this, he basically got everything from the tip. And there are things in here that you would recognise. Yes. This is a tea, a golfing tea. Remember we used to have cassettes that go into our, our cars? Yes, of course, yeah. This is a cassette player. One of my favourites, though, is this. It's a Tic Tac box. Now, when I think of folk art, I think of maybe quilts and, and hand-stitched rugs and... You know, I didn't equate a truck with folk art, but I can see the connection that somebody spent many, many hours actually making that, and you, you've got to marvel at the man's imagination. Work and effort and man hours uh, tend to reflect in the price. I'm a, I'm a bit worried that's going to be a little bit out of my, uh, my budget. And I was watching him buy this giant truck, and I thought, oh, I hope he doesn't buy it. I really hope he doesn't buy it. Because if he didn't buy it, I was going to be up there in 15 seconds. 270? 270. Is that...? Pushing the boundaries for you? Well, it's just it's just a tad up there. I'm gonna I'm gonna be cheeky. I'm gonna be cheeky. Can we get it? To, can we go halfway? You know, two sixty. Can we do two sixty? Done. Hey, what a Easy. gent. I think that is one of the most interesting purchases that I've made in quite a long time. And there's an even more amazing example of folk art: a model plane built from scrap metal by captured German airmen. Yeah, this is uh, built by German POWs right in Victoria at a place called Merchantson where they, they were interned. 
This model was ordered to be destroyed, but was smuggled out of the camp in an ambulance. And it has so many amazing features. Have a look at this. This is a proper latch door. Look at a real latch. Oh, it's a working inside. latch. Um, it also does other things. That it, when you open the drawers on these and, and you turn this around, the undercarriage comes out and there's the wheel. This happens on both sides. When I pull this lever here, have a look at the back wheel. It drops the back wheel. This will move the back tail over there. You can see it. Sometimes you see stuff like that, you know, that's so the only one in the world. That's the only one in the world. There's nowhere that you'll ever see that. Yeah, look, the truth is this really belongs in one of our museums, because it, it is a piece of folk art. Like fancy dress parties, nothing comes close to 350-year-old samurai armour. What well, Let's see what you look tell. like with this. No. Oh, wonderful. Now, some people <laughs> might say there's a definite improvement. <laughs> I tell you what. You it... might want to get a nose extension. <laughs> what do you think I've had? <laughs> <Nexus chin. laughs> that wasn't the extension I went for. <laughs> so I was struggling very, very hard there, fighting like mad to find something, but I did. I found a nice little uh, wall pocket for flowers. Well, it's a shell art, very tight little shells. It's at least 100 years old, it's not a modern one, and it's very, very pretty. This one, uh, actually, it's really a nice thing. It's well done, but you've got 245 on it, and I've got 115. So, there's friends for 30 years. What do you I'll mean? do that. For it's more than a dollar a year, but for you, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> so we have another 30-year collaboration. Thanks very much, Kathy. Pleasure. Nice one. Thank you very much. Bought something from Hunters and Collectors. How about that? I'm very happy with that. So, and that was me wiped out. So I've got no money left. Then Eric spots something he oh, nice. really loves. What are you looking at? Well, full enough, um, I was looking for things from the sort of the cocktail age, and you've got um, what appear to be, what are they, Japanese? They are, they're fantastic. Bring them out to have a look. OK. Japanese, like, uh, I mean, fabulous quality. I mean, you couldn't possibly drink out of them, could you? They're too precious. Why the red and why the black, I wonder? Well, he's and hers. Oh, his and hers. Right, OK. Oh, that, of course, it was... Japanese you, culture. Wouldn't show your lipstick, would it? That's it. Hey, oh, good thinking. <laughs> good thinking. You see, I'm really interested, as you probably know in art deco, and Noel Coward called it the age of cocktails and laughter. Totally. Um, and so, you know, things like that are redolent of an age. Come on, hit me with a price where I'm going to say yes, Rod. 140 Oh, hit me with another price where I'm going to say yes, sir. Go on, tell me again. 135. <laughs> OK, 135. What about 130? I, I just like an even number. Done. 130? Done. Shake my hand. OK. Well That's done. yours. Congratulations. Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm hoping that the auction is going to be populated with people with equally good taste. Fingers crossed they'll give me a profit. I think they were quite reasonable. Cocktails and laughter. Come on. I'll tell you one thing. Working with... Alan Carter. I don't know about the cocktails, but you guarantee the laughter. <laughs> Bloke's an entire joke. Come on, let's move for it. I won't tell him you said that. The boys leave Mittagong and take the scenic road to nearby Bowral. It's the biggest town in the Southern Highlands, with about 15,000 residents and thousands more weekend visitors who come searching for collectibles. No, the last time I came here was just a yard. Eric yeah. still has $345 to spend in a place he'll probably never forget. Well, when I was told we were going to uh, an emporium called Dirty Jane's, I did wonder. It's not, a, not an endearing name, is it? To anybody who might be slightly, you know, confused, Dirty Jane's bowel is what it looks like initially, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so, this, so this Oh, is, yeah. But what a revelation. What a nice place. So you have a wander around. I am completely potless, right? So I've got nothing. I've spent all mine, and you're too bloody mean to spend yours at all. No, no. The word is not mean. The word is, is careful. Careful. OK, all right. What a lovely man. Everything's laid out nicely. The staff was so helpful. And I just wanted to spend money. Eric spots a set of three vases. But there's a problem. Yeah, I know, that's, they've blistered, which is a shame. I mean, to be frank with you, 
um, I'm more interested in the pair, thank goodness, than I am in that In one. this. Oh, well, I could yeah. talk to the dealer and see. Uh, it's called satin glass, quilted satin glass. The single vase has you know, it's got some blisters on it. I'll probably buy all three, but I don't want to preempt anything until I've um, got a message back from the, the owner. OK, Georgie, what's the verdict? I spoke to the storeholder and he's happy just to sell you these two. So for these two, they'll be $20 each, so $40 for the pair. OK. How do you feel about that? I feel that's a done deal. Great. OK. Fantastic. I think a bit of a giveaway price. Eric's back on the hunt. He's got nearly $300 left to spend. Oh, come on, look at this. You're, you're suffering from the same disease down under as we've got over in the UK. Shabby chic. Shabby chic. But have a look at that cabinet. Can you see it? I can see it. Can you see it? I can see it. Right. I haven't opened it. When we look at this side, we've got nice mahogany. Yeah, I, know. I mean, <laughs> top class mahogany. But making something more fashionable can be the worst possible decision. It's marked two hundred seventy-five dollars. Yeah. And if they'd left it alone. In London, left alone, I would not be able to buy that for one and a half thousand Australian dollars. That's right. OK. This one slipped through the net. And that's how things become rare. That's true. So but thank you for making this rare. No, not at all. <laughs> Alan, thank you for your input. I'm going away to cry. <laughs> Don't be sad. As Eric ponders potential purchases, Out of Money Alan is spending his time window shopping. I think we're probably about on even keel. I wouldn't think anyone's ahead of each other. He's had a couple of good buys, I've had a couple of good buys. I think we're about even. But as you go through, you know, I th it, can change, it can change in an instant. It can change on one purchase. There's one picture here just caught my eye. I need to have a good look at this. It's sort of mogul in style. It's not absolute, absolute best. I've handled mogul paintings uh, in my days working in London. This doesn't quite match up to what I've handled in the past, but it's still a lovely thing. Eric believes this may well be a rare mm. example of mogul miniature art dating from 19th century India. It might be Eric's auction ace, if he can get it for the right price. Now, I've got to admit, I'm quite taken with this painting. Um, I, I realise it's seen better days. To be frank with you, I'd like to pay $80 for it, but where do we go with You're that You're joking, one? aren't you? No, if I was joking, I'd be going... <laughs> like you serious? $80. No. OK, go on. Can't do $80. OK, you're what telling What about me. maybe 120 120 listen, Come on, it is very nice. OK, listen, something inside me said, look for a compromise, Eric. Something is talking to me saying, yes, and I can hear you, um, go for 100 and see what the lady says. I'm happy with 100. You can have it for 100. Yeah. OK, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very nice. Nice lady. Nice price. What more do you want for in the world? Come on, Eric. Dirty Jane's is closing. Spend, man, spend! Well, believe it or not, this place is closed, but the, uh, the people responsible are still here. And it's, uh, it's incredible, because they've given me the keys to the cabinet uh, for all this silver, and I've pulled out something that I really like. It is a piece of, of silver, a sugar basket, uh, with its original blue glass liner, probably dates to about 1890, and it obviously belonged to a family of substance because their crest is um, engraved onto an oval uh, cartouche. Now, the price tag on here is 155 Australian dollars. I think that's very reasonable. I think there is still a profit to be made. I think the final three items of the day uh, are all going to return me a pretty reasonable profit. You know, fingers crossed. It's finally crunch time. Eric Knowles versus Alan Carter in auction number two, following Alan's tight win in auction one. The venue, Lawson's Auction House, Australia's oldest, established in 1884. Uh, and our ringmaster, Adam McDonald. Without further ado, I think we might get started. The big question in the room, can Eric claw his way back to square the series? 25 in the room. All bids are out at 25. No smiles for Alan's...
comedy coasters. 204 is next, the 1970s novelty ceramic inkwell in the form of an aeroplane. Oh, right. Well, that's nice. You see, I'm looking at a lot of this stuff, Alan, uh, for the first time, because you're off busy buying, I'm off busy buying, I've got a clue what you're buying. I haven't seen yours, have you? No, well, I ain't got a clue what I was buying either. <laughs> Alan's novelty inkwell returns a small profit. Oh. Very well bought, sir. 35. I think I paid 25 for that. Did you? All oh, right. Eric's French perfume bottles that cost him $100 are quickly dispatched to the guillotine. I'll sell them out at $50 the pair now. All done at 50s. Ouch. Oh, minus 50 there. Eric took a bit of a knock on the perfume bottles. Uh, paid 100 only got half back. Next is the large pie dish with blue and white Willow pattern, there we go. Very and Alan's pie pattern. dish cooks up a Bits nice result. Bits here at 190. There it goes, 190 opens the book to big number. Well, next up were the six Japanese lacquer drinking glasses. On a hot afternoon like today, where do we go? Who's got $50? Low and quick. 50 to go. What about 30? Should be hands everywhere at 30. No interest. Oh dear. Eric's Japanese goblets misfire badly. Remember, they cost him $135. And I just thought I got them so cheap. But as far as this audience was concerned, they weren't cheap enough. At 20 and 25, 25, it's up back at 25. Oh, sure, I'll sell it 30. Now. Worth that, I, I only managed to raise $30. Ouch. Yeah, but the thing is, you full through, aren't they? No. That was a psychological blow because I thought, I'm sure they're going to do well. But hey ho. Beautiful, beautiful pieces of glass. It was then on to a pair of satin glass rose balls. Very nice. Eric's desperate to get back in the game. $45 a pair now, 50 if you like them. At $45 a pair, you're all done. They're, they're worth all it. They're worth it. They are, I'll be there. I bought them well. I bought them for 40 um, Again, I was thinking I would more than double. Should be $70 each, but at 70 the pair is up. Back at 70 the pair, all done. $70 was the the hammer price for them. But at least it's the profit. Over the page we go to the Calvin Klein display. Eric searched Mittagong Antique Centre for hours, buying just one item. Now, his Calvin Klein is on the line. There it is. That's a bucket load of perfume in there, buyers. Dump that behind you, so all you'll get is a nasty <laughs> stain. so many jokes to make about auction room gullets, but I won't. <laughs> Because we love no, no. you all, $50 straight in. I thought, having paid 115 for it, that I was going to be, you know, well in profit. At 70, 80 in the room now takes my bid away. At 80 bid now, when he advanced on $80, we're all done. All silent. Ooh. 9.68 for $80. Bit of an anticlimax. I did think that it would have greater appeal. I almost felt bad when I saw the look on Eric's face, but um, being an auctioneer, I'm only doing my job. I can only sell to the people in the room, but occasionally, I do feel sorry for the vendors. Time for the Chinese shipwreck plate. Can Alan avoid that sinking feeling? Any advance on $90, oh, I'll sell it out to him standing at $90. I know. All done. That is my so area. That is $90. In orange and ochre. And it's going up for 90 bucks. Which is an absolute killer. I cannot understand that. Except it could just be that the buyers didn't see them or didn't appreciate them. I don't know. But that was a real big. Real big hit. So next up is the truck. Uh, I great hopes for that. And I thought at 260, I thought I'd got a bit of a steal. Ladies and gents, is 207 is... It's here, sir. Sorry to interrupt. Yep, there it is. It is. It's this whacking great big truck. There yeah. it is, showing up back there. It's a wonderful a little model, this one. When I say little, I mean massive. Yeah, 207 is a lot number. When he bought it in the shop, I thought, that's a killer. That's that's like an $800 truck. I thought that he's in with a real win there. But Eric's folk art truck has a major breakdown. 200 against your smiley Goodness at 200. Man. Any advance at $200 is with a lady seated up back at 200 selling. 200. 200. What's your number today, man? This auction is flatlining for Alan and Eric. Next slide, 206. Early Australian piece of shell art in the shape of war vase, circa 1920s. That's a sweet nice I like that. I like that. A little shell vase is one of Alan's hero pieces, but this is a tough crowd. At 15. At 15. At 15 bid now. Oh, yeah, I, want that. 15 I want to buy that. I want to buy that from the month. Oh. 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 What is that? That Alan paid $115 for the shell art. I've just knocked him $15. 
You don't always win at auction. The right person in the room, that's worth 200. Obviously, they're at the beach today. They're not here, so that's what you get. Five silver mounted sugar bowl with original blue glass liner, floral and leaf frame. Eric loses $55 on his silver sugar bowl. Almost lost count there at $100. Is in the front row at $100. No. Midway through the auction, and it's all bad news. Alan's lots have made a loss of $20. Eric is bleeding cash. He's a whopping 275 bucks behind. Then Alan. Alan starts selling, and he starts selling big time. Again, buyers, where do we go? I've got bids all over the place. Good. And I'm straight in. I'm saying good, it's yours. Even, the bid is here. Fancy Alan's lamp $50. is a real bright all spot. Oh, we're all signed at 450 I will sell now. All finished. Absentee takes I it think your quid's in there, Alan. Yeah, but... Oh, sorry, dollars in, dollars in. It's worth three times the money, but it's but not here. I, I can't say I'm disappointed with it, and I'm not really... I'm not really surprised, but it, it should have brought a lot more money, really. It could, it could have brought double that money quite easily. This is nice. I like this. I don't think I admitted it, but I do like this. Lovely thing. Yeah, nice and small. His woolly picture is a standout. 400, 425, 450, 450, 475. Wow. 475, 500 now at 500. Wow. At $500, wow, wow, wow. there's no advance on 500. It's all done. All silent at 500. Congratulations, $500. $500? for his, um, his woolen picture, of the show, which I thought was a fantastic thing, but 500 I thought, that's a lot of money. Two big hits, and it looks like Alan's on top. I did feel I was on the ropes at that stage. I really did, and I'm thinking, I think this could be a knockout. And then I managed, uh, I managed a left hook uh, in the form of the, um, the Art Nouveau games table. He paid $300 for this beautiful little Belgian chess table. At 325. It's against the room at 325. At 350, 375. So I was thinking, you know, wouldn't it be nice to double up on, uh, on profit? At 675's back in. Any events at $675. We're all done. You sure? In, out, and over. 675 in front. Congratulations. So that eased the blow a little bit, but. Uh, by this stage, I'm thinking, I think Carter may have just carried this one off. This is one I'd like to buy. Yeah, yeah, let's see what happens with this. Experimental glaze. Remember Alan's Art Deco vase? He hopes it's a one-off with an experimental glaze that might excite collectors. With me at $220, the bid is here. Wow. At $220 for the genuine Art Deco piece. He was at right. At $220, at $220. At 220, 240, ma'am, I'm 260. And it's Australian, isn't it? At 260, yeah. it gets yeah. the floor. I paid a bit of money for it. I paid $140 for it. I'll sell it out at 260. We're all done. I was quite surprised at that. I thought, you know, maybe people wouldn't quite understand it. But somebody out there who collects those vases has now got probably what's a unique vase. So that was a, a good buy. I'm quite happy with that. Coromandel box, Alan. It's actually really nice. And then Alan's Coromandel box, bought for $150, does the business at $225. Next time we move on to the set of It's a really nice box. Okay. Now, with around $1,800 in sales, Alan is in complete control. Poor Eric has only $1,200. Alan is way ahead. Now for his final lot. His library stairs, which cost him $70. Great little unit, boys. You don't see these very often. And for that reason alone, I have a bid here with me. The bid is $300, straight in with an absentee. Huh? At 300. 300. At 300. All right. At 300 bid now. There's no advance on 300. The single bowl bid at 300. I'm selling now at 300. Absolutely. You never see them. It's not somebody who suffers from vertigo, obviously, is it? But I could not believe it when they went out for 300 hundred dollars. I mean, I, you, get these, you get these things in auctions every now and again, you go, what? And you just can't get it. I can't get that, and I'll probably go and get that for quite some time, really. <laughs> so, like, $270 out of nothing. So next up is my miniature Indian painting, for which I paid $100. Here's where you have to be careful with Eric. Not that you can be. Eric buys differently to me. 
and he has different knowledge to me in different areas. But he bought this little Indian miniature painting. I always call those things of his a sleeper. He'll, he'll buy something very cheaply that other people don't recognise the value of. And then at the auction, you get a surprise. Indian it's stuff is really, really yeah, hard. No, it's um, a bit of time. $25, the bid is here at 25. At 25 bid now, 30 I'm out. But it's a very slow start for Eric. It looks like Alan's in with a big chance. I will sell it at 35, 35 40, 45, 50, 60, 60, 70. And so I just held my breath and watched it go from 100 to 200 to 300 to 400 to 500 and... 500, 550. 550. 550 bid now shakes ahead. I'm thinking it's my birthday. I'm thinking it's Christmas Day all in one. Thank you. I didn't know what to expect. Eric's little painting that could creeps higher and higher. 950, 950 I do. Any events at 950, 1000 now. At 1000 bid now, any events at $1,000, your head's shaking the wrong way. I'll sell it this side at $1,000 all said. All done. Wait for this, a thousand dollars. Good one, Eric. I think so. Well, that concludes today's Clash of the Collectible Showdown sale today, buyers. Some very good results, some not so good results, but that is the auction game. I have been handed the magic white envelope, which we will reveal the winner. Alan, you've come in at two thousand one hundred and five dollars. Mr. Eric Knowles. You've come in at $2,210, therefore making you the winner. Congratulations, Eric. Oh, thank you. Hi. All right. The thing is, we actually genuinely want to beat each other. I want to be Eric, and Eric wants to beat me. Well, we're only two episodes in, and I... I have to admit that it's got harder and tougher than I ever, ever imagined. But for goodness sake, don't let Alan know that. Next time on Clash of the Collectibles, we're in Australia's capital. Remember, I'm the tourist. Searching for national treasures in the strangest places. That market civic tip. Meeting incredible characters. Original David Joel in Sydney. And auction day shocks galore. Oh, no, no, no. Surely more. That's next on Clash of the Collectibles.